Hey, Ewing Gillespie. I'm the worldwide leader for Watson Talent at IBM. Watson Talent is our cognitive solutions. We, we coined the term cognitive, which is an augmentation of man's intelligence driven by uh, artificial intelligence, including machine learning and deep learning, uh, in the ability to uh, help the job seekers experience in the search of the right job, help the recruiters experience in focusing on the people most likely to succeed, and helping the employees experience manage their career without the help of HR internally. Uh, my name is David Yaris. I am the founder of JSwipe and the global ambassador at JDate. JSwipe and JDate are the two leading Jewish community dating platforms. We've been around for, on JDate side, 20 years. We're celebrating our 20th anniversary. On JSwipe side, we uh, launched about four years ago. Hi, Stephen Liu. I am the chief matchmaking officer at M8, CMO. M8 is a human-powered relationship matchmaking platform. It's powered by human matchmakers who are your friends, and friends of friends. I'm Ram, Director of Machine Learning at Zaya Music. We are at the intersection of music and technology. We have a service that converts your text messages into singing messages. My name is Meredith Davis. I am Head of Communications and I work for The League Dating App. The League is an invite-only mobile social dating app. Uh, we authenticate with Facebook and LinkedIn, and we are an invite-only service. My name is Mariam Bahadori, and I'm the founder of President of Esh. Esh is a Muslim dating platform that allows women to make the first move. Hi, I'm Karina Karsten, CEO of Love TV. Love TV speeds up the success of your dating and relationship goals. We do that with a subscription-based buddy system that you can add to your dating app or you can use as a dating customer. Venkata Bonham, I work as a senior machine learning engineer at Oxford Road. Oxford Road is a media agency, it's not a traditional media agency. Again, it's a, we are hackers, where we scale startups in Santa Monica or Silicon Valley uh, with a huge amount of response from the advertising which we do. It can be in many different channels like radio, podcasts, TV. My name is Miguel Lozano and I am the co-founder and owner of My420Mate cannabis related dating app and site. This iDate has actually been particularly interesting because the focus has been on AI and machine learning and how that adaption of AI and machine learning are making its way into the dating industry. I feel super excited about the information and I particularly am interested as we are advancing our Love TV product with AI currently. I felt there was, uh, it was more intimate. Mm -hmm. I felt I had better conversations and I was only been here for several hours, more than maybe some of the other I dates for some reason. <laughs> this event, I really enjoy this event because it's more in an intimate setting and it's specifically on artificial intelligence, which is something that I was very interested in seeing how Eshk itself can innovate and use the data from our users to kind of progress to uh, better features that would help with the user experience. I met a venture capitalist that's doing a, a roll-up of technologies to do social activity-based marketing. I think there's a huge need for that. If I think about a paddleboarding date, how do I go on a paddleboarding date this Friday? It, it, it's going to take me more time to schedule the date than go on the date. Isn't that ridiculous? So there's somebody here to solve that, to spend money to solve it. I met a founder of a company that's starting with couples and working their way back to singles, using the data acquired from couples to apply to the singles market, that is truly disruptive. So there's disruption happening here. I think we're gonna see a winner come out of the presentations today um, because people are coming at this from a new angle. This particular idea was tech focused. Uh, there was a lot of artificial intelligence and machine learning guys in here. I thought that was kind of cool. I also met some you know, content players, maybe even some people doing sim something similar to, to myself. So you kind of get a cornucopia of the dating industry. Here. Oh, a lot of CEOs and CEOs, maybe I'm the only uh, a technical person here, but meeting them directly and seeing their perspective of their business, that's really impactful because maybe if I work with one of their managers, I might not get the actual same impact of their business and I might not give the perfect recommendations for them at that moment. But directly meeting with CEOs, that's really in, in, uh, impactful. 
CEOs, COOs, executives, AI scientists, technologists, media outlets, a variety of very interesting high-level C-suite individuals. I met CEOs, I met matchmakers, I met consultants. I guess everything that I wanted to, to, to meet. What made me go wow was one of the ways that someone here was integrating geophysical locations into the dating app experience. So basically bridging the online and offline world um, was really, really fascinating. What made me go wow is the uh, probability that we might get hit by a lot of scammers. That's one thing that I just didn't think or really focused on that would happen. Um, so I'm really thinking about maybe implementing some platform like Scamalytics to see if we can protect ourselves in the early stages instead of waiting till the point where we are uh, saturated with scammers. What made me go wow is this feeling that I've been, I, I came in here and I felt this overwhelming sense of something is about to change. And we are on the forefront of new innovations that haven't really been happening in our industry. And so it really is just this sense of excitement um, and eagerness for what is happening right now, not in the future. When a growth stock drops 22% on one day, just because of an announcement, that's pretty significant, right? So, so if you look at Match's stock in the day that Facebook announced, what's interesting is it already came back. It didn't take very long to come back, right? So that kind of tells you it was a little bit of a knee-jerk fear reaction. But the wow for me is how impactful the oligopolies are to all of us trying to disrupt them. So these organized monopolies, we gotta continue to keep an eye on, not just from a Cambridge Analytica privacy perspective, but Facebook sneezes in your market and the overwhelming market leader loses 22% in one day, woo, we gotta be careful. We gotta be careful. We're, we're, we are in the robber baron era of the industrial revolution. Some people just don't see it that way. I think the wow was the collective talks that were given. Um, I thought the sequence of presentations were really spot on. I think the evolution of the industry is very exciting right now and the discussion about Facebook entering into the dating industry and growing the industry and everyone you know, benefiting from that, I thought that was quite interesting. Ewing's keynote was really good. Uh, I was pretty impressed with how much effort he put in and how he presents a good case for how gender balance impacts dating success and behave, drives behavior. That was a pretty good insight to take away. Esli's talk about natural language processing and both his apps, uh, that was really good too. Miriam from Esk, her talk was really good. The behaviors and the trends that she presented was something new to me from an age group perspective, but something I could relate from a cultural perspective. So her providing a service and being entrepreneurial and coming forward is really inspiring and informative. The wow factor which I felt was the dating app for Muslims. That's really a wow factor because I do have a lot of Muslims and even they do used to talk about like, I'm not allowed to date, uh, I'm not allowed to meet, I'm not allowed to go to social gatherings or something, except if there are only Muslims involved in that social gathering or something. But when Mariam said about Eshk, how it is transforming the millennials. Of course, millennials do have a different perspective on the current world, how they are transforming. That's really an amazing factor, which I felt here. I would just say the whole experience in general. I think there's some people, maybe there's some, maybe, uh, some content partnerships, maybe. It's how I learned about the industry was coming to, to iDate because it really is such a great community here. Everybody's so sharing, even though maybe you're in the same business or maybe competitors, but not really because dating's about different strokes for different folks. I really like the conference because of a lot of flavors involved. Meeting the people from different domains, it's not just one huge big domain dating or something, but a lot of subdomains like gifting services, coaching services, matchmaking services. So a lot of these things involved. And being a machine learning engineer where I really look for data, I can really see how dating industry is moving on with the simple changes in technicalities. 
Oh, the conference has been amazing. So far, the event's been fascinating. It's, it's really special to meet other people in the space. I feel like it's generally a fairly fragmented uh, industry, and the fact that we're all together in a room with people who care is really great. It was very educational for myself. I've owned my app for four years now. Up until the end of last year, did I even hear that there was conferences for the dating community, you know? So as soon as I heard about it, I knew we had to come, so we're here. The event's awesome. Nice people, good conversations. The machine learning thing is something that I want to pursue. Somebody came up to me after my talk and said, you know, I love your speech, but I think you kind of got it wrong. You are a human algorithm. You're not, it's not human matchmaking versus dating algorithm. You're a human algorithm. And so I thought that was quite groundbreaking as a good way to frame it. The last few talks actually taught me a lot in terms of artificial intelligence and how we can really leverage that because I've kind of been stuck in terms of how we can increase user experience, um, especially with the data in terms of what people are really into. Our goal is to get our users outside of the app as well in terms of events, but it would be great to actually connect them automatically and invite them to events just like uh, similar platforms like The League. So there was a presentation on the concept of reading information that the user has probably already offered but we might assume they haven't. And the context was, can I read all of the SMS messages on the Android platform, not just the SMS messages that are happening within the app? So what is the communication that happens between a recruiter and a candidate and a hiring manager and employee that might happen in email in absence of a job conversation? Can we find a way to use that without violating privacy? I don't know that we've actually thought through that. I think we've always slammed the door and said that's a privacy issue and violation. This guy presented it in a clever fashion. And what he said is, most of his users actually believe you're using it anyway. So that really got, the, that got me thinking about, uh, are we closing the door to a set of information that we already have the right to use? And then our users actually think we're using it anyway. Definitely picked up some interesting new ideas at this event. Across the board, uh, hearing what other people are doing inspired me to think differently and newly about some of the projects we're working on. Yes, I do have some ideas on how to change my analysis on users' behavior, but it's not something drastically, but there are some of the other important points which Alan might have uh, discussed about it, and maybe I might have uh, changed my idea on how to work on my next model or something, which actually I have that idea and actually I noted in my uh, machine, and I'm actually working on that parallelly while I'm here in the meetings, but yeah. I did, for sure. Just listening to the AI, there's a lot of stuff in there that, that I feel that we need to implement on what we're doing. Yeah, there was multiple ideas that I plan on taking back to my partner and, and implementing on what we're doing just to make our stuff better and make the user experience much better. Totally. I loved, loved the ideas that were presented in this conference. There's a lot of helpful uh, partners that I think we can work with and I'm super excited. Yeah, I really did. I'm actually in a meeting right now talking with you know a lot of matchmakers a lot of people who have great ideas on how matchmakers and dating services can work together and I think that is a really interesting uh, unique opportunity that we haven't really seen a lot of yet. Not necessarily the music side but for machine learning yes I see many opportunities that exclusively because I'm here and spoke to the people who came here and heard the people talk here that I have some ideas that I can work on. Probably four, three or four, I think. I have been to iDate, I think, three times and have spoken at two of the conferences here. This is my first time at iDate conference here. This is my third time in iDate, actually, but my first time in LA. Yep, this is my first time at iDate. This is my first time at iDate. This is my first time at iDate, yes. This is my first time at iDate. We meet each other and uh, talk about our businesses, share for a few minutes, and then we move on to the next chair and sit in front of another person and meet them. And so it's a great way to quickly connect with a handful of people that um, we may end up working together. So the speed networking was actually my favorite part. You know, it took Mark, you know, to tap us on the shoulder and keep us moving. Um, it's not a natural process for, you know, people to experience for the first time, but it's really cool because I met six other people that I probably wouldn't have talked to, uh, you know, in the normal flow of sitting down and watching presentations and eating lunch, etc. So, super helpful for me. That's how I met the VC. 
If not for speed networking, I don't meet the VC. We literally have the same idea. He happens to have a shitload of money to go with it. So isn't that a nice thing? Speed networking produced that outcome for me. The experience was really cool actually because I met a lot of people that are more on the tech side of things and I'm not more of, I wouldn't say I'm more on the tech side of things, but so it was really cool to learn something different and everyone was really surprised that I was a Muslim woman actually launching a Muslim dating app because when you hear Muslim, you don't really think of dating. So it's kind of new to everyone. It was great to see their, uh, the reaction to it. The experience is amazing because given the fact we are not ma uh, talking for a long, long time, just a brief idea where we are conscious and the other person is conscious about how to express themselves in our first interaction. So just in two minutes, discussing what I work and how they work, that actually gives me a lot of other sparks in my brain saying that, hey, this is what we can do more. This is what we can do more. It's not just, it might not be an immediate reaction saying that we can improve the business or something, but giving that uh, a simple spark between the persons, even though it's for a minute or two, I really like the idea which you came up with, Mark. And you sit down, I don't know how long it was, but it was a short period of time, maybe five minutes, and we sat in front of individuals from, you know, from the conference and we're able to exchange what we do for a living and, you know, why we're here. In the speed networking session, I met like four or five people. I got two people to, interested in the API service that Zaya provides, and I'm going to follow up on that later. So, considering how little time we spent and how soon the lead got generated, I'm pretty impressed that that happened. Yeah, I'm actually set a meeting for next Tuesday, um, so I'm excited for that one. I did get a couple of leads that I'm going to hand over to the right people back at the office. Yes, I do have some persons in my mind. I did have well, some sort of discussion with them. Since they are new to the industry and they are looking for marketing their uh, app or their services, maybe one of the presenter who talked about their gift giving business, maybe I can have a best business with him, but that's a good point actually you bring up. But yeah, we can still discuss with them. A good possibility. Probably no deals for us. And the reason is uh, it takes a five, it really 2,500 person size company to get the true value of the products I focus on. Um, so maybe not here, but I think I'm one generation away, one relationship away from some contacts where a, a deal may mature because, you know, I've already been uh, offered to be introduced to a couple companies just based on what they saw in the recruiting app itself. I believe so. I believe that I met some key individuals that um, we are in the process of talking about a partnership with. I would recommend iDate to anyone that has any piece of information at some level of scale about how humans interact in a romantic way. If you've got any sliver of data, this market can use it. There's a lot of really smart people with a lot of point solutions, as we call them in my world, that are focused on user interactions that desperately need some more information to power bringing AI to those interactions. So if you've got data uh, in some various way, shape, or form, I think you've got a gold mine of opportunity here from a business development perspective. The other thing is, if you've got products and services to sell to dating technology companies, that's the, that's the low-hanging fruit layup, right? You've got to get here. There's a lot of buyers in this audience. There's a lot of folks looking for solutions to make it easier for them to pass value onto their users. So think about apps, two-sided marketplace, matching, disconnected matching and the flow of all that kind of a thing and so if you have a product or service that fits within that concept you got to get here because there's a lot of buyers for you. If you're not at iDate you're not in the dating business. If you're not at iDate you're not in the dating industry. If you're not at iDate you're not in the dating business. If you're not at iDate you're not in the dating business. If you're not at iDate you're not in the dating business. If you're not at iDate you are not in the dating business. If you're not at iDate you're not in the dating business. If you're not at iDate, you're not in the dating business.